calendar today. <laughs> on my calendar is I got to stop this, minimize this, get that rid of that. And if you're going to help me, you will be in rapport with me. The more energy you're going to find, the more problems you're going to find. And folks, it's called QP, quantified problem. Every problem's got a number. If you can get a number from me early, I'm losing 20% of, of my revenue. I've got 5% too much cost. I've got, get a number early, you got a great prospect. If you're talking to the right people, you got a great prospect. Why is this important? Last time I checked, when you're in stage four or five in the sales process, you're gonna have a quantified number you want them to pay. And how many of you have had a deal like this? In the beginning, they say, well, oh, you guys sound great. This is really a great solution. Near the end of the sales process, great became like, okay. <laughs> Am I the only one who's ever had that? <laughs> it's like, well, you, it was great. It was a key initiative, like a key. Oh, it was a major initiative. Oh, like a major. You gotta get numbers. Why? Every senior executive on the planet, every one of you, every day talks numbers. If you got a problem, you can quantify it. You can quantify it on a scale of one to 10. You can quantify it in dollars, revenue, units. Get that number on the table. They want to share it with you. That's energy. That's the energy of lead. Energy of the lead is the motivational direction, typically away from pain, and with a number. Number two, what is a qualified lead? In my opinion, a qualified lead is a sense of urgency. Well, what's a sense of urgency? What is a sense of urgency? This was a tough one for me. Transfer of ownership, sense of urgency. This was a tough one for me. So I went to the dictionary. I found out what is sense of urgency. It means of pressing importance. It also means when business people have a true sense of urgency, they think action on critical issues is needed now, not eventually. Not what if it's easy into a schedule. Now means making real progress every single day. So I have a question for you. We have a tool called the law of 2x. We always give our prospects twice as much time as they need in between stages. The same person I talked to you about earlier, the financial guy. He says after the seminar, we give them this homework assignment and we schedule a meeting for two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks? I'm sure he forgot your name two weeks ago. This is ridiculous. Why are you giving him two weeks? Cut it down to three days, cut it down to it. If it's important and it's really important to them that they're talking to you, cut the time in half. Why do we give everybody so much time? Fear of rejection. We have a fear of rejection. So we give people all the time in the world to take your time. You and I, all right? Tell you what, let's go on a date this Saturday. No, I'm busy, oh, rejection. Okay, you and I, let's go on a date. Saturday, 2018. <laughs> oh, you have to say yes, there's nothing that's kind of far out there. We give our customers way too much time. Law of 2X says, whatever you're gonna do as a next step, cut it in half. Why? Because your deal's gonna bleed energy. Energy comes from your buyer. Why would you give them two, two weeks? In two weeks, their sense of urgency now has gone away and there's another problem on your desk. If you wanna keep the energy going in a lead, please don't let it bleed. That'd be your fault that you gave them too much time in between steps. If it's important, hey, have them change their schedule. If this is an important problem, they wanna solve it. You're the one holding them back. I don't wanna be pushy. Oh, stop it. They're losing money every day by not implementing your solution. This is business. They're losing money daily by not implementing your solutions and you're holding them back. That's not a good thing. Number three, challenges that are essential to the success or survival or winning of losing in my business. That's urgent. Four, with a true sense of urgency, people want to come to work every day to cooperate energetically, responsibly, intelligent with others. And they do. People want to find and launch smart initiatives. They want answers. Folks, you don't have to have the answers. The answers are in the room. They want to answer the, the question themselves. Show of hands, how many people in this room think that when the customer provides the answer, as opposed to us provide the answer, you have a much better deal. Agreed? But how many of us love to give answers? <laughs> yeah, every time my kid has a question, I always wanna give the answer. It's about 17 you finally figure out that the kid wants to answer the question himself, right? My son, who's here? Kyle, where are you? Yep, my son here is a quarterback, right? He plays for University of San Diego, he played in high school up in San Jose. When he was about 15, 16, I'd always film the games, and we'd go out in the backyard, I had a little TV out there with a DVD, and we'd watch the games. And of course, I've seen so many of his games, of course, I have opinions. 
And about, you know, we'd come back, he'd come back from the game, 11 o'clock at night, because it was a Friday night game. we put the DVD in and we'd watch. And I'd be saying, well, Kyle, that was great, but your footwork here, you know, your arm didn't get to zero, this, that, the other. Well, about the first quarter, about four minutes into the watch of the game, he'd go, Dad, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. No, I just got started here. I got three more quarters of, of giving you my expertise and telling you what I see. So I finally figured that out. So finally, about a week or two later, I said, let's do this again, and I shut up. And then he started talking. Dad, I didn't get to zero there. You know, my footwork, that, you know. Buyers want to give their answers. We don't, shouldn't be the ones giving the answers. Sense of urgency comes from the buyer, not from us. Tap into that energy source by asking great questions, tapping into their passion, their urgency about wanting to solve the problem, not about adopting your solution. No. Everybody okay with this? Cool. Next. Buyers buy in a process, and this stage two is kind of important. You get a lead from Infusionsoft or from a marketing lead or whatever it may be, you have that initial issue, you sit back and say, hi, so quickly, tell me what you need. <laughs> Needs are a list of things the buyer wants to have done. They're very important, and we call those effects. Effects are a list of needs. I want your product to do this, 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 and this. Oh, it's gorgeous, we do this, 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 and this, it's perfect. That's what we call below the line. That's the technical case, the user buyer, that's what they want. What's above the line is a whole different value proposition. And we call that cause. If one thing I'd like you to take away from this session, I want you to take away the word cause. Cause is a nasty word. It's a great word because it provides energy, it provides motion. What caused you to look at my stuff? No, that'd be all about you. What's causing you to do something different? What's causing you to do something that people hate to do? What do people hate to do? Huh? Yeah, oh yeah, especially, especially my kids don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> what, what do people hate to do? People hate to change. So here's what I'd like you to do. Monday morning, you're back in your office. Monday morning, on your way to work, do me a favor. Take a different way into work. No, 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 take a different way into work. How many are going, that's stupid. I'm not doing that. No, that's kind of crazy, right? We did a program a couple weeks ago in San Jose. We started the program at 8.30. At 5 to 9, this woman walks in. She goes, it's your fault. I go, what? She goes, there was a traffic jam. I took this different way. It was stupid. Guys, people hate to change. The reason they're talking to you is because they have to change. The reason they're talking to you is they got something that works now. It kind of works. But they finally bellied up and said, enough. I got to change. I've got to change. Tap into that energy. Do not take them off track and say, what's causing you, great word, what's causing you to come to my stuff? Because I'd like to hear how great I am, thank you. <laughs> no. What's causing you to come to this decision that you have to make a change? You'll find energy in that sentence. That value proposition is above the line. The needs proposition is below the line. Folks, every deal's got two value props. You've always heard about the value prop. I disagree, there's two. The user buyer, I want this to be faster, quicker, better, user interface, get my job done, go home on time. The above the line value prop. I'm tired of doing this, it's holding my company back, it's costing me two million bucks a year because I can't fix this problem. There's two different value props. One's not really more important than the other, you gotta get both early in the process. Ask two questions. Number one, what do you want? Number two, what's causing you to change? You'll find two different value props there, okay? CSP, customers solve problems. I guess I've done this long enough that I've got, got to come to the conclusion if you don't have a problem, I don't know if you have a deal. Oh, they like what they solve. They really love us, good for you. <laughs> nah, you gotta solve a problem. That's where energy lies. So, to put it succinctly, we've got the below the line buyer, right? That's the user buyer, they got a list of needs. We call that solution box A. They've got their own solution and their solution box A. Solution box B is the above the line buyer. They have a whole different value proposition. So as this below the line user buyer, above the line fiscal buyer, executive buyer, business owner goes, let's explore what's important <coughs> in each of the solution boxes. Above the line, five Ps, product, Perceived quality, professional support, also called ease of use, price, and budget, okay? 
Price and price to budget, and obviously the personal win. If you're going to ask questions of the person who's actually going to use your thing, the product champion, the person who's actually going to use what you sell, these are where I'm going to ask those great questions. Questions like, John, regarding the professional support or ease of use of what you're looking at, what's really important to you? John, for you personally, what does this mean for you? John, from a product feature standpoint, what specific things are you looking for? Those questions to the below the line buyer are really going to give you your competitive advantage. Because most of your competitors are preaching about all the things they can do. And then John, the guy who's below the line buyer, has got to assemble what you say and what he needs and kind of put the whole thing together. The answer's in the room. Ask the five Ps. Product features and the benefits thereof. Perceive quality of fit. John, on a scale of one to 10, what's your quality look for you? I mean, do you want the top quality, like the Mercedes? Do you want like the Chevy? Do you want like the, you know, what are you looking for here? You know, you know, you can't tell me what you want and how much you want to pay. You can't tell me what you want to pay and how much you want. You know, where's the balance between quality and price? What are you looking for? These are great questions to ask the user buyer and they probably will be truthful with you because they're great questions. And here's the big mistake. We talk to the below the line buyer, we get all this great stuff, great information about what they want, what they really want to use us for, <coughs> it's really kind of cool. Then we take this message above the line and give an executive summary of what we've done. And the above the line buyer's value prop is different. It's a different value prop. He or she has different questions. So now we're above the line and we talk to Mary. Mary's the above the line buyer. She's got a different set of value propositions and we call that value star. There's five ways to create value. Five, number one, ROI. Number two, time. Number three, risk. Number four, leverage. Number five, brand. And the questions behind each one of these are ones that you should master. About five o'clock, the bar opens up upstairs, 5.30, the bar opens up. And let's say you're up there having a drink or a Coke or whatever it may be, and you run into somebody you haven't seen in a while. Hey, I saw you at InfusionCon two years ago. Yeah, hey, yeah, Bob, Bob, yeah, Mary, oh yeah, hi. Hey, what do you sell again? When someone asks you, what do you sell? What do you tell them? What do you tell them? Product, service, benefits, yeah, the whole bit. Folks, at this value prop, you sell one thing. The answer is money. You sell money, period. Now money takes the shape and form of many different things, but you sell money. Watch, 100 people in the room. Um, if everyone give me $10, please give me $10. I promise you, I won't, I'll uh, be back in this room one year from now, and I'll give you $20 back. 100% return on your investment. Any takers? Okay, everyone give me $10. I won't leave this room. I won't leave this room, and in five minutes, I'll give you 20 bucks back. Do I have any takers? Yeah. You know what I'm selling? You don't know, nor do you care. <laughs> Neither of these people. They don't know what you're selling. They don't care what you're selling. They just want their money back. Matter of fact, they're kind of greedy. They want like two or three times their money back so they can invest in it somewhere and make even more money. They're greedy. They want to return on their investment. I invested money to be at this show. You know, the booth and everything else, like many of you. I'm expecting a return. I didn't show up just to say hi to everybody. I mean, I'm kind of a nice guy, but I, I want a return on my investment here. ROI is the most used point in the value star, and in my opinion, the least effective. Because at that level, you can make numbers look any way you want to. If you want to have more fun with the value proposition, ask questions regarding time. Uptime, overtime, time to market. People will always pay for time. You will. You'll pay more for a nonstop than a one-stop flight. You'll pay about more to be on a tollway than to be stuck in traffic. People will always pay for time. Do not tell me, push, how you're going to save me time. <clears throat> ask me, Mary, comma, what are the biggest time challenges you face with your product or your services over the next six months? What are the biggest time challenges that are on your desk right now? She'll talk your ear off. She will talk your ear off. Ask me questions regarding time. And that will help me understand your product or service and the value proposition I'm giving. Hey, have you guys figured it out? I'm not a public speaker. I don't have a lot of jokes. We're not all laughing. I'm an instructor. I'm a trainer. So hopefully you're all taking notes here. <laughs> Because the whole point of this is to make you better as a small business person, right? I'm a small business person as well. We try to get this whole thing out to make sure that people use this stuff. So that's kind of fun stuff. And in my opinion, 
Value Star is one of the better tools to use in a sales call with a business owner or a business executive from your standpoint, because then you're not slinging product features and benefits, which is really the below the line buyer, which is important, but not what we want to take above the line. And as everybody in this room knows, who's a business owner, at my level, when you, we get down to it, it's all about risk. Ask me questions about risk. I'll talk your ear off. I've got risk about new product launch, people risk, product risk, competitive risk, my, my, my uh, lease risk, I got, I, I got tons of risk. If you could do something to help me mitigate my risk, I'll pay for it. I got a new product I'm launching this year. I'm expecting $150,000 of revenue on it. If you come to me and say, Skip, for $5,000, I can probably guarantee you'll get that 150. I'm thinking I'm about at 80% risk on that. So if you can get me from 80 to like 95 for like five grand, where, where do I sign for that? I do the math in my head all the time. It's all about risk. Ask me questions about my risks. We did a speech years ago for a big semiconductor company, $20 billion semiconductor company. And I was a keynote speaker uh, around the world, at a world kickoff. So I gave a big speech in uh, Boston, gave a big speech in Munich, and I had to do an Asia Pacific speech, so I flew to Singapore and was their keynote at that speech. It was an hour speech, about a thousand people in the room, and I'm at nine to 10 o'clock. That's my, my the keynote. Well, at 10 to nine, the marketing person comes up and she goes, Skip, I have a question for you. I said, sure. She goes, Brian, the number two guy in the whole company is here, and you'd like to say hi to the troops. So would it be okay if you went from like 9.15 to 10.15? in Singapore, where I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> sure, 50 minutes is fine with me. She goes, Skip, have you ever met Brian? No. She goes, come here, let me meet Brian. So he walks me up to Brian, right? The number two guy in this huge $20 billion company. Have you ever met somebody? And while you're meeting them, they're shaking your hand. And as they're shaking your hand, they're looking past you to see if there's somebody more important than you in the room. Have you ever had that happen to you? <laughs> He's like, oh, Chip, thank you. I've heard great things about you. You're great. Really thankful for what you're doing for our company. Oh, whatever, right? I go, Brian, thank you, it's been an opportunity, it's been kind of fun, I have a question for you. You're launching that new Black Friend ship this year, um, regarding the sales force and stuff, what do you see as your biggest risk? <laughs> risk? The man wouldn't shut up. He's telling me about this risk and that risk, he's getting mic'd up. About two minutes after nine, the marketing person goes, Brian, we're ready for you. He turns to her and goes, I'll be with you in a second, and keeps talking to me. <laughs> about two minutes later, he apologizes, he goes up on stage and does his thing. About two, three weeks later, I'm walking through the, the company headquarters, and I hear this guy go, hey, Miller. Oh, Brian, hi, sir. He goes, come here. Pulls me into his office, which is about as big as this area up here, closes the door, goes behind his, his desk. This is the number two guy in the company. Hits a button, this projector comes down from the ceiling, and he starts giving his, me his strategic plan and asking me questions. I know nothing about semiconductors. In my speech, I called it chips, dips, and salsa. <laughs> I did. But I know about risk. I know about risk. Folks, before you ever get to that good sales call as business owners, I expect you to be above the fray. You know what you guys service, product feature, benefit, feature, advantage, benefit, I got it. At my level, if you can help me mitigate my risk, because see, solution box A, is my 50 million, 5 million, $200,000 problem. You're a piece of it. Solution box A, to the, to the user buyer, you're everything, you're what's being quoted. But to the executive buyer, box B, I'm sorry, box B, you're a piece of it. Your whole job is to be a piece of helping me get closer to that goal. Is this making, are we okay with this? Cool, number four, leverage. I, as a business owner, I, as a VP of marketing, VP of sales, VP of uh, operations, VP of manufacturing, whoever you're selling to, I've got three, four, five problems on my desk all the time. If you can help me on two or three of those, instead of just one, that's a value. I do work with companies, not because I help them sales train, make their salespeople better. That's just one thing that's probably on the salesperson's mind, or the sales VP's mind. He also has to ramp his salespeople up faster. We can help with that. He has to have his managers manage better. We can help with that one too. He has to have a better comp plan. We don't do comp plan consulting. So that one's I can't help him with. So when I'm talking to an executive and I say, you know, what are your biggest risks? What's your biggest issue? Why are you looking to change? And they say, I've got to have my salespeople better, better tactically calling high better. 
I don't say why we, that's exactly what we do. Let me tell you about that. I say, sir, that's really great, comma. Anything else? And I'm looking for problems. What's the magic number? How many do I want? Three. Short-term memory, physically located right there in the brain. Love seven digits, plus or minus two. It's always why we like things in threes and fives. A, B, C, one, two, three. Good, better, best. Extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. All right, threes and fives, that's great. Two's not enough, four's kind of weird. It's always threes and fives. <laughs> so this is where we want to be. We want to be at this point where we're asking these questions. And obviously brand, brand, image, brand. It's why people pay a little extra for horses on their shirts, that type of stuff. And please remember brand can be internal. I want to look good, so I want to pick a solution that my people feel comfortable with, or it's external. I want to look, buy something so I can show my marketplace we're a quality provider. Intel inside has the Fujitsu computer looking the same as the IBM computer because they're all using Intel. So that's a brand to the outside, right? I bought this greatest software package because I want to prove to my employees I'm investing in them. That's why you buy Infusionsoft or whatever it may be. So remember, brand can be both ways. So when we put it together, do not leave a sales process, especially well before the proposal stage, unless you know both value boxes. Box A, you're a piece of. And box A, you're total, that's it. You are the solution. To the user buyer, you're the solution. To the executive buyer, you're a piece of the overall puzzle. But you gotta quantify that piece. Is it a half million dollar problem? A 20 million dollar problem? A 200,000 dollar problem? I guarantee you if it's a $20,000 problem and you're asking for $15,000, you're not gonna be included in the party. Always get numbers. Above the line people always talk in numbers. Everybody good here? All right, uh, again, because I'm a trainer, not a speaker, here's what I'd like you to do. We've talked about a lot of things so far. We've got about uh, 15 minutes left to go, 20 minutes left to go. Please take two seconds, turn to your neighbor and tell them what you've taken away so far. If you do this, it really resonates, and you're gonna stay with it, that's important to me. So turn to your neighbor, tell them what, one or two things you've taken away so far, what are you gonna do about it, all right? Go, and turn to your own neighbor, you have never met him before, introduce yourself, make friends, let's go. Talk to a client or a salesperson.